I want my stepdad to fall off the ladder and die while putting up the American flag. Mark Leibson, who is the author of the popular 2005 history of Old Glory Flag, an American biography, in an interview said, As far as the big question is concerned, did Betsy Ross make the first American flag? Every historical study has come to the same conclusion. There is no good historical evidence that she did. To be honest, Ross was a well-known upholsterer in the city of Philadelphia, but one of many upholsterers. She repaired uniforms, tents, blankets, and so on. But flags? First, there is no evidence that Ross and Washington knew each other, or that Washington visited her shop. Second, the flag is never mentioned at all. In any letters of any member in the Continental Congress in 1776, in fact, there is no mention of a flag by anyone in that year. Third, and perhaps most important, Congress issued the flag resolution in 1777, a full year after the supposed Ross flag was made. Mr. Canby is the reason why Ross gets the credit for the first American flag. Canby was the grandson of Ross, and the first to make the claim about Ross's role as the mother of the American flag. It happened in 1870, six years before the American centennial celebration. His proof? Family stories passed down from generation to generation. And because of Canby and his claim, people now visit 239 Arch Street every time they visit Philadelphia to see where the first American flag was made and learn a little more about Betsy Ross. There are no letters, diaries, newspaper accounts, or bills of sale implicating Ross had anything to do with the creation or even making of the flag. Even the National Museum of American History's research has proven that there is no evidence supporting the Ross flag and have deemed it just part of American folklore. Also, Ross biographer Martha Miller said, Betsy Ross was one of several flag makers in Philadelphia, and her only contribution to the design was to change six-pointed stars to the easier five-pointed stars. See, they could have had stars of David on the flag, and it would have been so much more appropriate considering what's going on now, but they chose satanic pentagrams instead. The world is pretty much controlled by the tribe. This is why you see tons of nations out there using the red, white, and blue flag, using red and white stripes and crosses and the same symbols over and over. Go to the bailiff in the docket because you're out to sea. You're on your ownership, your partnership, your relationship, whatever ship you're on. But a flag is basically declaring a turf or area. So it's basically marking your territory. And that's what the definition and etymology of flag means. But what are the colors? Colors are very representative. Why are they always red, white, and blue? Well, red is red. Red is the warrior, the pull yourself by your own bootstraps, capitalist capitalizing. You could be Bill Gates. You can be President of the United States. Well, blue is love, everybody. Take care of everybody. It's the Venus principle, where war, mar, uh, red is the Mars principle, the warrior. All right? And blue is take care of everybody, calming. Blue, we want to help everybody, and everybody's in the same boat, and we need to take care of everybody. And that's why we have red, and we have blue, and you use green when you 
Green Party gets a chance to take away votes from the other guys if it even mattered, but it doesn't. But the red and the blue is very symbolic. White represents purity, white light, and the Luciferian principle. So red, white, and blue is you have the warrior, you have the calming Venus principle of loving everyone, and you have the white light. The tribe worships Lucifer. And here you have Luciferian fnords along with the pentagrams. Um, the Cold War was a hoax perpetrated on the public. Washington and Moscow were always deeply in bed with each other. CIA and KGB agents would hang out in pubs at night, drinking vodka together, and, and laughing it up how the Cold War is all bullshit. All these flags are just corporate logos, where the nations they represent are actually treated as corporations. They will rearrange the symbols and the three colors here and there from country to country, but they're all the same team. They pretend to be against each other. They pretend there are borders and countries, but it's all a ploy to control and oppress the populace. Look at the, pl the flag they depicted in Futurama. It's the American flag, only instead of stars, you have the whole planet Earth on there. They are conditioning you with the idea that in the future there is a one world government and America is the tool by which the one world government is brought about. Whatever the American flag stands for, it's not for the good of the people. It represents the tribal bastards who control everything, and that's their corporate logo. The Soviet Union used the pentagram as well. You see the pentagram star right there. Those are Luciferian pentagrams. The tribe worships Lucifer, and they love their occult symbols. Also, the sickle there can also be considered a satanic fnord. As you can see by the colors of the flags, the symbols that appear again and again, the people who create these flags are all on the same team. They don't see nations as having borders. That's just a stage show for the goyim. Whatever discourse these nations appear to have is artificial. Soviet Union and America were never enemies. That was a fraud perpetrated on the peasantry of both countries, while the elite, the global elite, who truly rule the world, bled both countries dry while keeping the citizens in fear and propagandizing the citizens of both countries to hate each other. So when you hang up these flags, or you hang up the American flag, the flag does not represent you as an average citizen. It is a corporate logo for the psychopaths who control you. But should we trust the information in a video provided by a guy who believes the earth is flat. The flat earth theory is a psyop that was likely introduced by the CIA to tarnish the truther movement. How many will refuse to look at the good information because the guy supplying it also believes in the flat earth? It has a discrediting effect on everything else the guy says. The way the truther movement is sabotaged is either by misdirection, by having false truthers, like Alex Jones, or by tarnishing it by having fake truthers who give good information but mix it in with something retarded, like the flat earth idea. Now you can look at more symbols, like 
the double-headed eagle. That's a Freemason symbol, and look at all the nations throughout history that have used the double-headed eagle as a various coat of arms and flags and logos. This Russian medal has the Illuminati pyramid with the all-seeing eye. The American dollar bill has the Illuminati pyramid. All white homelands and societies have been for millennia controlled and manipulated by this cabal of Jewish Satan-worshipping mafia who have sometimes turned on each other the way mafia bosses will do as they compete for power, like, for example, when they killed the Russian Tsar to install communism. But the Tsar himself was a, a Freemasonic member. In reality, all these countries have never been sovereign nations. That was something for the Goyim to believe in, an illusion to control and manipulate the Goyim with propaganda, phony patriotism, so they could create phony wars by keeping the white race divided and distrustful of each other, so the Goyim toil away as peasants, working themselves to the bone, so this cabal can live large. These are elites that control us. National borders don't exist for them. They can fly to any country they want. They don't need passports. They don't need to go through customs. They can bring whatever contraband they want to any country they want, or almost any country. They are all one international tribe. Nation-states are just a fucking illusion for the peasants. The same type of people who controlled the Soviet Union are the same type of people who control the United States and, and so on and so forth.